What? You really thought I was gonna get this wet? <laughs> you don't know me. Haven't you heard the news? It's about to start raining up in here. Open up class. We are about to get learned. Oh wait, hold up, this ain't, <laughs> this ain't really appropriate. Let me just get myself together real. <sighs> All right, yeah, <laughs> I think that's more appropriate. Just get myself together. <clears throat> All right, I think we're ready for Sunday school. to Genesis chapter 8 verse 6. After 40 more days, Noah opened a window in the boat. He sent a raven to fly away. The raven flew away from the boat and then it returned. It continued to do this until the earth was dry. Then Noah sent out a dove. He wanted to see if the water had gone away from the top of the ground. But the dove could not find anywhere to stand. Water still covered all of the ground. So it returned to Noah in the boat. Noah put out his hand and took the dove back into the boat. He waited for seven days. Then he sent the dove out of the boat again. The dove returned to Noah in the evening. It carried a fresh leaf from an olive tree in its mouth. Then Noah knew that the water had gone down. He waited for seven more days. Then he sent the dove out again. This time it did not return to Noah. Noah was now 601 years old. On the first day of the first month, the water that had covered the earth was now gone. The ground had become dry. Noah made a hole in the roof of the boat and he looked around. He saw that the top of the ground was dry. By the 27th day of the second month, the earth had become completely dry. God said to Noah, come out of the boat, bring your wife, your sons, and their wives with you. Okay, so look, yes, my name is Ariel but I ain't no mermaid baby. So I have a very strong relationship with dry ground, which is why I can't help but notice when I read this story that although Noah knew multiple times that the ground was dry, the man still didn't leave. It really took God to be like, yo, bro, take your wife, take your kids and them animals and get out the boat onto the dry land. Anyway, that's just food for thought. Now this is how I envisioned the story. Places everyone. God? You okay? God? Hmm? You good? You look troubled. Deeply. You see what's going on down there? What you mean the endless violence, the idolatry, the murders, the lies, the cheating, the increase in demonic activity, the lust, the giants, the... I, 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 not really. I didn't, didn't really see too much. Yo, I can't even lie. I seriously regret making humans. Oh, you feel like that big man? Yep. Man, so what you gonna do? I'm gonna kill him. Oh! I did not see that coming. Every human, animal, bug, anything that lives, breathes, or moves, I'm gonna destroy. You really got murder on your mind. Now that's what I call sovereignty. I like it. There is this one man though. He's perfect. Does everything I ask. I can't destroy him. And that's what I call mercy. I like that too. <laughs> Let me go talk to my boy, Noah. So God goes to Noah and he says, look son, I'm about to destroy the entire earth and I'm gonna use a flood to do it. So I'm gonna need you to build a huge ark so that it could spare your lives and just start this whole human race thing all over again because this mess just ain't working. And Noah being the obedient guy that he is said, I bet. So Noah goes and he builds the ark and when it's finally done, God tells him, all right, take your wife, your three sons and their wives, get in the ark along with two of every kind of animal. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights and the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. Finally, at the end of the 150 days, the ark rested on the top of Mount Aratat. And this is kind of how I imagine that conversation went down between Noah and his family. Yo, dad. It's been months. Why don't we get out of this joint? Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm mad grateful that God spared our lives and everything, but your boy's getting kind of seasick. Patience, boys. I'm just making sure it's safe before we get out there. What you think I sent the dove out there for? Dad, that bird done left and started a whole new life. He ain't coming back. And I think it's time we do the same. Listen, after all that just happened, I ain't moving until I hear God say, Noah, Noah. Hmm? it's time to go. 
Take your family and all them animals out the ark, be fruitful, and multiply. And scene. Now we don't brag, but that was a pretty good performance. It was all right. I just love the story of Noah. I think there's so much you can learn from him as just a person, cause like, can we just pause to swallow the fact that God literally said that I regret making the human race? Like that's how mad God was, but it took just one man to change God's mind. Like he called Noah perfect, and he wasn't perfect by the way because he didn't make any mistakes. That's not the definition of perfect here. He was perfect just because he obeyed God. Also, I can't help but wonder, why didn't Noah leave the ark? Maybe it really was because Noah was just like, listen, after all that just happened, I ain't moving, I ain't doing nothing until God tells me to move. Maybe it was that. Or maybe it's because he felt safe. Maybe he felt comfortable. Maybe he felt like, wow, finally, there's no naysayers, there's no people mocking me. Everybody in this ark believes in God. This is like a safe, comfy spot that literally saved my life. Why should I leave? And the reason why I say that is because it makes me think like, Okay, I'm a PK, right? I was born in church, born and raised, hallelujah. And it's easy to get comfortable with thinking that the place you talk about the Bible is in church, within the four walls. But the church is really not confined to the four walls of a building. We are the church. We need to get out there. We need to get out the ark and never be afraid, never be ashamed. And if you ever have that feeling of intimidation because people are mocking you, they're teasing you, or you just really feel like the odd one out, just remember Noah, right? Like he was literally like the only one out there. Look, it's really as simple as this. Go to church, get inspired, learn, study, read, but don't forget to go and share those lessons with the world. All right, class, lesson over. You know the drill. Make sure you follow the instructions that I'm putting up on the screen right now so that you can have your chance at being featured in the next episode of Sunday School. But before I leave, a big shout out to everyone who submitted a video for the last episode of Sunday Schools. I loved all of them, but of course, I just had to make my favorite pick. So stay tuned till the end to see my favorite pick. Until next time, I'm Ariel Fitz. God bless your soul shop. All you gotta do is finish my sentence. You ready? Ready? So in the beginning, God created two people named Adam and Eve. And he placed them in the Garden of Eden. Now God told them they could eat from all the trees in the garden except for one, which was the tree of the knowledge of good and bad. So when the devil heard that, he wanted to mess them up. So he decided to use a serpent because it was the cunning of cunning. all the wild animals. <laughs> this animal was able to deceive if first, first yes. and then after both of them ate it, they both realized they were naked.